Welcome to our line opinion panelists for the week. We're happy to be joined in studio by Merritt Allen of Vox Optima Public Relations. Dave Mulryan is here. He's president of Mulryan Nash Advertising. And right beside him is Catherine McGill, founder and director of the Mex New Mexico Black Leadership Council. Thank you all for being here. Now, our first topic today centers around law enforcement. Last week on the show, we took you inside the roundhouse for a look at some of the public safety legislation on the table for the entire state. But the reality on the ground usually changes perspective a bit. That's where we want to focus this week on the day-to-day -day operations for specific departments. Now, we've got to look behind the curtain, so to speak, in a recent Albuquerque interview with Bernalillo County Sheriff John Allen. Now, when asked about the state of the department's body camera systems, I love this so much, he told the journal, quote, the technology that we have right now for body-worn cameras is trash, end quote. Now, Sheriff Allen points to issues recording audio because of wind or area noise, a big problem, memory capacity restraints, delays uploading and processing videos, it goes on and on, and system shortcomings that make it difficult to impossible to share long videos with the media or other departments. Now, Merritt, the Sheriff's Department is just two years into a five-year, $3.8 million contract with the company providing these body camera services. Why is this just now being discussed? What can be done about these complaints? It, it's really kind of shocking when you think about this deal. Well, what I found mm -hmm. um, from uh, this story in this interview is this shows a true willingness from this new sheriff mm. to have complete documentation gotcha. and uh, some transparency and actually have functioning video documentation mm -hmm. of law enforcement work. So just to make that clear what you're saying, he is pretty much the opposite of his predecessor who would well, force by law. Yeah, or certainly, or certainly <laughs> yeah. has a different approach to it. Right. Um, uh, he's certainly embracing body cameras right. and uh, he wants the full functionality of the best technology that is out there. Mm -hmm. And so I found this a very refreshing change. And it seemed to me just from my decades of crisis management and crisis communication, he is owning this, he's taking it by the horns, mm -hmm. and he is not afraid uh, to talk about it right. and showing some accountability for uh, field work. Yeah. So I thought this was a very positive turn uh, when it comes to transparency and accountability in the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. That was that was my first take. Right. Now, the backstory, mm -hmm. this contract, and why it is and why these uh, cameras aren't working, does that imply that we were looking for a solution that wasn't robust, right. that there's not a lot of, the, there was not a lot of previous interest. That, that may all uh, be the case, mm -hmm. but I just feel good that there's a solution moving forward and that our current sheriff wants something better. Yep. Good point there. Uh, David, he's not shy about, he's not trashing his predecessor, certainly, no. but he's not, he's put a little distance between philosophically where right. Mr. Gonzalez was and where he is now. Right. Although if you talk to him personally, he is trashing him, but it's okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, to see. But, you know, but I think that the, the newly elected sheriff is doing a smart thing. He's mm -hmm. saying, look, the coffers are full in the state of New Mexico, like right. it's oil and gas. He is pointing out, we have a problem. I need to get rid of this problem. I'm going to need money, but he's, he's doing it from a communications. He's saying this thing does not work and it's not a good thing and I need you to fund it. It's a smart move. I mean, I think it's a smart move, but, but it shows, to me, it shows that he understands how being an elected official like a sheriff, his job is to make sure that the department does what's best for the people who elected him, mm -hmm. but also for the people that they, they are you know, sworn to protect. And mm -hmm. so I think it's a smart move all the way around. I think he's, he's really, of the newly elected you know, statewide people, he's, I think, doing a really good job of laying out an agenda that he's gonna cover mm -hmm. in the next you know, four years or however, it's four years, right, for the sheriff? Yeah. Yeah, and, and so I think it's a good. I think it's a good move. He's making his, uh, he's making it out there, Kathy. Interesting, just to catch folks what we're t up to, what we're talking about here for this 3.8 million, five-year contract from Utility Inc. That's the name of the company. Uh, includes 310 body-worn cameras plus uniform tailoring, vehicle cameras front and back, cruiser Wi-Fi hotspots, holsters that activate the cameras when a firearm is drawn. That does not sound like trash technology, but it sounds good, but apparently it's just not working. Tech is hard. It's a very hard thing to implement. Did yeah. we try to take too big a bite here? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I think certainly other people, you know, have body-worn cameras that do work. Thank you. And so it would have been possible to do a little research to find out 
who did they use mm -hmm. and how did they um, implement those those uh, body worn cameras in their departments? The fact that we didn't do it here mm -hmm. is very telling, right. and um, you know that we didn't have a, a whole committee of people who were working on the project who. It is their job to Thank do those you. kind of things. That's right. So the elected official, probably not the best person. I'm not certain what the digital literacy is of that individual, but mm -hmm. I would probably think that, that maybe he should have, you know, found some other people who knew a little bit more about it. Right. And I would just say that that, you know, our current sheriff is in a honeymoon period. This is the perfect time for him to say, you know, I went through and I looked at this stuff and um, tell the truth about it, tell it quickly, and it's trash. Mm -hmm. And I'm here for a politician who will call it what it is, mm -hmm. call a thing a thing. It's a trash. You know, perhaps the people who were there before, as Merritt alluded so eloquently to, did not want it, and so mm -hmm. then you do something that would probably sabotage it. We need them, and so I say, get it right. We, you know, have to acknowledge that we made a mistake and now correct it. Mm -hmm. Merritt, it's interesting to think about when I read about some of the shortcomings here, how one could agree to a deal of five years to have not enough memory to record more than seven hours of video and then it just automatically clips in you have to send your video to the company to get it back again? It, it just it's not going to work by any stretch. Well, we all know, we, it, it was pretty well reported that there was a great reluctance on the part of the previous right. um, uh, sheriff mm -hmm. to go to uh, uh, body-worn cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, did, not, did not see a need, felt it was going to hinder uh, law enforcement officers right. in that department, yep. did not want it. So. Um, if it was something you're reluctant to do, are you going to invest a lot of time right. and effort? In, so here's a solution. Okay, fine. Now I have body-worn cameras. Are you happy? So, you know, I don't, what, what the intent was, you know, we, we may never know. And I think Sheriff Allen just wants to move on to working technology. And Does Mr. Gonzalez need to sit down in front of somebody and explain this deal? Is, is that the next logical step? He's out of office now, but. I don't, I don't think that's helpful. Okay. I think, I think okay. what should, uh, Sheriff Allen should just be allowed to uh, move on and get the technology he needs right. to um, have his department function the way he feels it should. Mm -hmm. and a quote from Sheriff Allen, by the way, to finish this bit, I think the sheriff's office is way behind the power curve because they should have had body cameras probably two years previous, and then the law came out and they were rushed, and I think that pushed people into the corner to get things done, end quote. I think that's a very good explanation of that. Mm -hmm. Now, shifting our attention to Albuquerque specifically, Council, City Council voted unanimous, unanimously last month to remove the city's existing Civilian Police Oversight Agency Board and replace it with a new Civilian Police Oversight Advisory Board. The change will reduce the number of members on the board, I'm going to talk about that, and allows the board's executive director to make officer disciplinary rep recommendations to APD without the approval of the board. Now, Kathy, the changes, will this, these changes make the board more effective? It's hard to predict on this one, but just on, on its sort of physics, are, are you in support? Um, I would say that, you know, by all indications, it means that the board has less power than it did before. Okay. Um, that it, 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 it wasn't working, right. and I'm not certain that this is going to make it work any better. Okay. And so, you know, remains to be seen what happens. And I certainly am not a fan of one person being able to make a recommendation without the support of the entire body. Right. So um, we'll see. It's we'll a good see. point, David. And this comes at the department updates its use of force policies for right. the first time since 2020. Kind of a big deal. A very big deal. The use of tasers specifically. We've had issues here in this city where tasers are either inappropriately used or could have been a better use than a right. firearm. Now we're getting more clarification. Does it seem more clear to you I as mean, you it read It seems this? a little bit clearer, but, okay. but, but you know, I'm uncomfortable with this idea of civilian oversight of the p police. The police department is continues to be dysfunctional. I don't mm -hmm. think they have the resources they need. We are under-policed on any given day. Yep. And, you know, and I think we're expecting them to do things which are just not possible to do. You know, I was talking to someone who knows these things and they were saying, if we had an equivalent amount of police that we have to police to, to you know, persons in New York, mm -hmm. our police force would be three times larger than it is, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and I think, and again, all of this speaks to, 
you are not going to attract a lot of people coming to New Mexico for whatever reason if you're known as being high crime. And I think we have that reputation right now. I mean, you can have you know an educational system that is the greatest in the country, but you have a high crime or you're, you're, you have a reputation for being high crime. You're not going to get anywhere. You're mm -hmm. just not going to do it, you know, and just stuff. So I mean, and like, interesting. Merritt, on this, on this. Um that change the, the city's oversight process, does this impact the influence the public has on something like APD's updated use of force language? Are, are, we, are we deeper in the conversation now? I, you know, we, we've been rolling around in this for a decade. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I, I do not see a significant cultural change. Um, there is an opportunity to bring in uh, new leadership to the police department right. and the mayor opted to stay with political expedience. Right. Um, I don't see a real desire to change the culture. Mm -hmm. And so we keep having what we have. Right. Um, and uh, policy changes and oversight board adjustments, um, I don't think do much than create new bureaucracy. And I think Dave makes the perfect point. We're, we're under-policed, we're under-resourced, um, we have cultural problems uh, within the police department that are not being addressed because we have the same people running it. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think it really matters. Yeah, that's a good point there. Thanks to our line opinion panel on that. In our next segment, the panel and I will discuss a new series of bills that could make some significant changes to our election processes, from ranked choice voting to open primaries. A lot of good stuff to talk about. We'll talk it through all in about 10 minutes.